Hey everyone, this is Pick for Life, and in today's non-Transformers video review, we'll be taking a look at Bandai's Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Arts Brawly, the legendary Super Saiyan. And as much of a Transformers fan as I am, I really grew up for a long, long time being a Dragon Ball fan, and I just started collecting SH Figure Arts, got very late into the game uh, collecting them. So this is my first review for an SH Figure Arts figure. It won't be my last, but this is Brawly, so it's um, a really interesting one to be starting off on. So let's go ahead and start with packaging review. So you can see the packaging is what you've come to expect from SH Figure Arts, the Dragon Ball line in particular, with this nice window. You get um, this background, this kind of dotted stylistic background with the figure's face on the side that carries around, uh, on the front that carries around to the side. Um, the back has a lot of great product images for Brawly with his accessory that comes with a stand here for his fireball as well as um, just showing him interacting with our favorite hero Goku. Okay, going around to this side you get just another product image with Brawly at the top and at the top you are welcome to see the legendary Super Saiyan in all of its Comic Sans glory. Bottom is just a whole bunch of warnings, nothing interesting. But that's it. Um, I also did get it in the nice SH Figure Arts cardboard packaging box. So Toy Dojo always provides this. And um, it's just nice to have. I don't have all of them with, for all my figures, but I, did, I do keep them. And it's nice to have that and, uh, in, in, in the, as a collector just to have that packaging as well. So let's go ahead and get this guy out of the packaging and start the review. Out of the box, you see the standard plastic tray that we get with SH Figure Arts um, figures. We get to see the alternate faces you get. You get two additional faces, two additional sets of hands, and three, you know, effects parts, energy blasts, the green ones that Brawly is really in infamous for. Additionally, around the side here that they hit kind of well is the stand and the post and the C-clip that... Um, that you're going to use for the effects since these kind of like float in the air as opposed to um, stick into the hand or grip into the hand. All right, so let's go ahead and get the figure out of plastic tray and get into figure review. So here we have Brawly and he's just massively impressive. And to give you an idea of just how big he is, here we have him with Super Saiyan Goku. And that's just incredibly big. Goku barely gets to his abs. You know, to the mid part of his chest, his pecs, and I mean this is pretty close to scale I would say. Brawly always was massive in his legendary Super Saiyan mode and he always dwarfed any of the other characters in the series. So let's go ahead and get Goku out of the way before he gets scared off and destroyed and go into review for Brawly. Uh, before we get started I did want to say that they went above and beyond um, with this figure. They actually added some plastic to protect some of the rubs that are going on between some of the painted sections. Uh, so the ab area has a little um, plastic piece right here, which is hard to get off. Um, I, I was, the best way to do it is go ahead and just pop off the abs or, or the upper body, which is on a little you know ball peg. And you can plug that back in. Ugh. Come on. There we go. And the same thing for his wrists as well. His wrists are also have these uh, small plastic pieces. You can remove them from the ball joint if you want to do that, or ball peg, sorry. Plug those back in, and those are obviously how you switch the hands as well. But again, it's really nice that they went ahead and put these on to make sure that your figure was protected in transport. All right, so as far as articulation goes, Let's go ahead and start with the upper body. So his head is on a, a weird, so it's probably easier if I just take off his face. So if you take off his face, you'll actually see that he's on like two joints, these kind of Rebel Tech-like joints that are together. And that gives you some additional freedom of motion. And that's because his neck is just like so thick that is hard to get any, if it was just on one, he probably wouldn't get very much movement. But he, he does get a good range of mo movement there. He can't really look up all that much, I mean, without looking awkward. So he, he can look up like this, 
that's as far as it goes. If you open them up a little bit more, then you can get maybe a little bit more. But he'll mostly be looking down at people just because he's so massively huge. So yeah, he, he needed that. His head looks a little small um, just because his body's so big and his neck and his back muscles. So I think it would have been a little bit better if he had a slightly bigger face. But I think they kept that the same because, you know, they kept the character's face the same, but not just their bodies and stuff that end up getting really big and muscular. He doesn't have, like, the neck joint that uh, a lot of figures do. So here you, you can see that the neck itself um, can hinge down, move down, and is articulated. He doesn't have that, which is kind of unfortunate. His whole upper body uh, is kind of like an ab crunch, I would say. I guess it's like a chest crunch. And it does seem like it's on kind of a ball joint or ball peg because you can get some side to side motion as well as from front to back. It's not a lot of left to right, but it's still enough to get some posability out of him. His shoulders are what are really interesting. So they actually added kind of an extra, I guess, piece here. Usually you have this piece that swivels and it would go into a ball peg. This actually has another joint here, another rounded joint here that has a ball peg going into it. So you actually get the um, range of motion in here, going forward and back and up and down and around. And then you have the shoulder that only swivels up and down. But in, in unison you get, you know, complete freedom of movement here. You can get really high. And uh, yeah, even with all his muscles, he gets a good range of motion in his arms. His biceps are on a swivel as well. He does have the double jointed elbows, which give him a really good crunch. He can, you know, make a muscle pose for the ladies. And they're, they're, they're pretty well molded, so it doesn't look all that awkward. I mean, he has a little bit of elbow and then just kind of plainness there, but it's pretty well hidden. And then his fists or hands, as you saw before, are on that ball peg, which you can pop off and pop on. Same thing on the other side, as you would expect. The uh, waist is on that that ball peg that we saw before. He can get around, but his kind of belt or robe or skirt, whatever you want to call it, does get in the way. That is actually, uh, I should have showed it before when I had it off, but that is actually articulated as well. It's on kind of a, a joint that allows you to get some freedom of movement. But yeah, this is the ball peg with the swivel at the top. Plug him back in. The skirt or robe, whatever, whatever you want to call this thing, is also pretty well articulated. So they, again, this top part is separate and articulates. This front part here is this on its own swivel hinge. Same thing with each of the side ones here. So you can get this to come out really far up to give him a lot of freedom of movement for his legs which is absolutely great and you can even have it just out like that when he's powering up just billowing. The rear doesn't doesn't have any um, articulation though, it's just one s standard piece, molded in piece. It would have been nice if they had this articulate as well, but unfortunately not. The legs are what you've come to expect with um, the Dragon Ball figures. They are on that s separate hinge that you can move down so you can get more freedom of movement. And then you have the ball ball joint, ball peg, all the way in his, his hip. So you get that rotation, all sorts of rotation at the hip, but then at the upper thigh as well, that's separate. He can swivel around that. He does have the double jointed knees, which he has a lot of range of motion, which is standard again with the SH Figure Arts line. But I, I always like that they go ahead and mold in the details underneath so it's not just smooth it, it doesn't look all that disjointed when you do that the other thing with the rear skirt is that because it doesn't articulate you do run into some interference if you want to bend the knee backwards so the ankles are the standard ankles they're on that that kind of SH figure arts joint so you get a lot of range of motion there and then he does have that toe pivot that goes up. So I think that's it and as far as articulation goes. Uh, overall, like the, the paint apps are really great on this guy. I love 
what they do with this line. The, the, the flush is not just, you know, one tone or anything like that. They have a lot of nice highlight skin tones, a lot of shadows, you know, washes kind of stuff. Even the, uh, his pants are not just white. They have like a blue tint to them. The gold that is used is really vibrant, like on his forearms and on his boots. It's really nice. And the paint applications are, at least on mine, are are pretty flawless. I, I couldn't find anything that was really bad with it. The other things that you um, are getting as far as decoration wise is this blue jewel here which is really great. You can actually see behind it is kind of a sparkling detail. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Come on, focus. Ah, uh, it's not focusing that well. That's as close as I'm going to get. I don't have a macro lens with this new camera. But yeah, you get another jewel here. Um, this is just a paint painted one, but actually this might be painted too. Maybe this might this might be the only jewel, but the paint matches really well with the jewel up there. As you can, as you can tell, um, I kept I was mixing that up with actual stone of some sort. But yeah, the paint is really really great. The other thing I want to note is that his hair, even though it's blonde, you know, Super Saiyan blonde, it is actually more of kind of like a banana yellow, and it has highlights of green, which what is what you see when you see Brawly in Super Saiyan form. He always had that unique green um, hue to his, his energy, which also obviously carries through with his energy blast. So I like that they did that. I, I, I was wondering how they were going to handle it, if they were just going to color his hair more greenish, but they actually did it with the highlights, which I think is the way to go. Because green hair just would kind of look funny. Yeah, again, really nice paint apps down below as well. On the back, you can see his massive back muscles. They're just kind of ridiculous. So, let me actually do a quick 360 since I didn't do that before. Sorry about that. 360. Nice molded detail. I love that it's not just symmetrical too. It's actually realistic in the sense that they do mold differences. So it doesn't look like a really fake piece. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into um, accessories. So in addition to Brawly, you do get some extra accessories. You get three of these, what I believe to be identical, um, translucent energy blasts. Which are the energy blasts that Brawly is known for. In addition to being translucent green, they do actually have some highlights, this, these white highlights that, you know, are added. And it does have a little peg hole here that you use in conjunction with the, the posts on the stand so that you can have him firing these. So in addition to the energy blast, we do get two additional faces. So here's the first one where he's screaming. And then the second one where he has kind of a smirk. I really like this one. He seems uh, very cocky and very brawly-ish to me. I, I almost kind of wish that they had one with pupils, but understanding that they didn't do a separate set of hair for the non-Super Saiyan mode, that that's one he really has pupils, so I can understand why in the Super Saiyan mode that they wouldn't have one with pupils. So you do get these two two sets of extra, extra hands, so this one is kind of an open palm shooting energy blast kind of deal. And this is more of a grippy you know, what what um, they used this for was, in, in the promo shots, was to grab onto Goku's face. But you can also use these for energy blast or any kind of posing you would like. As always, to replace the face, what the instructions tell you to do is remove the hair at the top and then remove the face. Um, I actually don't find that you really need to remove the hair in this case, but it's up to you if you want to follow the directions to the letter. Just put those back on, the new face with the smirk. Then plug the hair back on. And there we go. Now we have Smirky Brawly. As far as the hands go, we'll go ahead and unpeg this. And we'll throw on the grippy one. So we'll punish Goku. Or Kakarot as he would be called by, by Brawly. And again, the promo shot basically has Goku just getting owned by Brawly by holding him up like this. But yeah, we can get rid of Goku again. 
but yeah, that's basically how you use replace the two accessories. The the hands again, uh, the energy blast again. They don't fit in the hands. I mean, I guess you could just have them hold it like like this, which looks perfectly good. But they're really designed to work with the additional accessories, the the stand, which we're going to get to into right now. So here's the stage, the Tamashi stage that you get. So you get two of these arms, which are jointed uh, on each end at these three joints. So you can bend them like so. And with the stands, with the plugs here that um, you can pull these out and fill in the holes that you're not using. So let's go ahead and plug this one in here. Zoom up a bit. Go ahead and plug in a energy blast here. And then we can go ahead and bring Brawly in to show you maybe what it would kind of look like if he was using this. So he's forming an energy ball here. Looks pretty menacing, right? And additionally, you can use the C piece, C um, piece to go into the same port, and you can use it as a clip for Brawly if you want to do that instead. So we can get rid of this one, plug this one in, have this go around Brawly's waist, like so. Show up on the back, just in case you're not familiar with uh, these stages. Man, he looks evil, doesn't he? So finishing off with final thoughts, I really like Brawly. It's it's a great figure for me to start off my reviews on, just because he does have some new stuff that's going on, and he is a bit different than the figures that have come out before. I mean, there are some things that they were really able to get done really right just because he doesn't have a shirt so a lot of the stuff, a lot of the articulation they were able to, um, you know, add and still um, not have to worry about the clothes getting in the way. There is a couple of things that I will note that I did notice that on his chest they do have some molding lines which is a, a bit unfortunate because I would hope, I would have hoped that they would have hidden that. I don't know if you can see it, but they come across down here and across the front part of this chest. I would have hoped that they would have put that somewhere else uh, so that you wouldn't see it there. It's very, it's very subtle and most people probably won't notice it if it's sitting on your shelf, but it's definitely no, so you can see it a lot better there now that my lights are kind of hitting it at the right angle. But it's definitely noticeable. Um, it's not a huge deal, but something that I would have liked um, improved. And that may have been uh, the way that they do it with all other figures, but I haven't really taken, I haven't noticed any other figures, or I don't own any other figures without clothes uh, on the top, so I can't really comment there. The other thing that I would have liked is um, for him to have a little bit more waist articulation. So most figures do have that kind of extended waist so that you can get it around and do some more movement. This one doesn't have that which is unfortunate, so you are kind of limited. Um, you're gonna get, so it'd be nice if you could have, have pulled that out just a little bit and to get a little bit more movement. And then again, his head movement, even though they have those double joints, um, just because of the way he, his neck and body is molded, you do get a lot of gap in here, hollowness underneath his chin, and you don't get any up movement just because of how big his hair is in the back. Again, there's the things that they had to trade off just to get the figure to look right and look authentic to the, the series um, that they probably had, had to sacrifice a little bit of articulation and movement. But otherwise, I think he's a fantastic figure. He looks as maniacal as you would have expected him to be in the series. The fact that, again, that he just dwarfs um, Goku makes it very easy to understand why he was so menacing in the series and such a threat even to Goku who you know obviously is the protagonist of the series but Brawly is really amazing I kind of hope they do release a non Super Saiyan form of him with a kind of calm stoic emotionless face just to have him because now that we have this big chunk of a guy I, I want to have the regular mode as well just to go along with him 
But yeah, I think this guy's done a they've done a great job, Bandai's done a great job with this figure, given that there's nothing to hide underneath clothing for the upper body and still have it look really great and still have a lot of great range of motion. Um, the stuff that they added here with that extra extra piece to get that additional movement in the shoulders, just since he's so bulky, was really great. And overall, just the entire paint, the deco, the the paint here, the gold paint, the jewels, the blue, metallic, glossy blue um, um, paint there. Everything just looks like it has top-notch quality um, QC. So I, I really do enjoy this figure. I highly recommend it for old collectors as well as new ones like myself. So thanks a lot everyone for watching this non-Transformers review. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. If you are a SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball collector and would like to see me improve on my reviews, if I'm missing out on things that you typically like to see in reviews, please leave them in the comment section below or shoot me a message and I'll try to include those. Again, this is new for me, so uh, I'm trying to improve on every single video I do. And I'm looking forward to providing you guys with more and more reviews. If you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up or share it with your friends. Uh, share it with the Dragon Ball Circle if you're a member of different forums. I'm going to try to get on those boards as well. And as always, if you want to keep up to date with the reviews I do, more SH Figure Arts and more Transformers reviews, click the subscribe button. And last but not least, if you're a new viewer to me, um, I am running a giveaway for the month of January until January 19th along with my video sponsor, um, Toy Dojo, who sells this guy as well. So if you want to pick him up, click on the link in the description below and you can pick him up for yourself and your collection. But yeah, that contest will be going through January 19th and we'll be announcing the a winner on the 20th. But with that, I think we're done for today and our first non-Transformers review. Thanks a lot everyone for watching. Have a good one.